although people are worried here, they will be reassured to hear that. Uh, but uh, certainly in the last hour or so, I've been chatting to people and they're saying, look, if we get asked to evacuate, what does that mean for uh, any possible exposure that we may already have had? And also, where on earth are we going to go? I've been saying, has the government set up uh, places, refuges for people to go to? And I think it's, uh, the answer is simply no. On the scale that they are moving people from this area, it simply wouldn't be possible. Um, that was Nick talking to me a short time ago, and we can I speak to him live on the phone. And Nick, um, there have been reports of another aftershock in the area. What can you tell us? There certainly has been more than one, in fact. Uh, it was uh, quite a sizable one. I was in uh, a restaurant just eating, uh, speaking to the gentleman I just referred to uh, a moment ago, and he um, said that it was well, uh, well beyond what you would normally expect in Japan. Uh, and uh, certainly uh, people were starting to get up from tables with the uh, perhaps with the intention of leaving the restaurant. He was a man who was quite fairly concerned about the situation and the possibility that they would be asked to evacuate. That said, uh, five or ten minutes later I was standing outside the restaurant when uh, another premises, possibly a restaurant or a bar, a uh, hundred yards or so uh, up the road, emptied out and uh, a load of people spilled out, I would say, in their teens and their twenties and it was just another, day, another Saturday night in Japan. They seemed not to have a care in the world. Now, what about the situation regarding people who have been moved away from the reactor? What, what's happening? Are these people still coming out of that area? And if so, where are they going? Well, we left the area as the uh, light was starting to fade and what had been a very strong surge of people was beginning to wane slightly. That operation had been going on through most of the day, and I think those people who wanted to move, even those who were not in the 10-kilometer exclusion zone, had already started to make that move. But there were still people traveling, but I think most of that has stopped now, although we've had an extension of the evacuation zone. So I'm not at the uh, precise location that I was earlier today when we were really uh, able to observe that flow of people uh, it may well be that given the extension that it is continuing but I, I think the the news coming from the uh, atomic authorities here uh, that the uh, nuclear core itself seems to have remained intact despite this explosion is offering people uh, a fair bit of reassurance and, and w were you able to get any I know you've had to keep back outside this exclusion zone but were you able to get any sense of activity at the plant itself or perhaps vehicles going to it or personnel being brought in to, to maybe help contain this? Well, we've seen a lot of emergency vehicles moving around this fairly rural part of Japan that I'm in at the moment. Uh, some of those heading in towards the uh, area where the nuclear facility is based, others coming out. We've also seen a, a fair number of army trucks as well. Uh, but I have to say, because of the language barrier, it's been difficult to uh, ascertain exactly whether they're involved in the evacuation or whether they may indeed be involved in uh, trying to deal with the plant itself. But I think uh, uh, in that earlier clip uh, you played just before you started speaking to me a moment ago, I, I don't know whether I said, but I think one of the latest plans is that they are going to be using seawater to try and cool this reactor further to contain any further uh, increases in temperature, which could cause problems uh, in the coming hours. Nick, thank you. Well, our correspondent Damien Grammaticus has just arrived in Sendai, which is close to the epicenter. I'm sorry, actually, we're going to go to Roland Burke in, in Tokyo. He's standing by for us. Sorry, Roland. Um, bring us up to, to date with the latest, because, of course, the Japanese government has responded. Yes, the, uh, the, the latest uh, we're hearing here is from prefectural officials in Miyagi. They're saying that in one town, uh, Minami Sanriku, uh, 10,000 people estimated are missing. And that's a town uh, that had a population of only 17,000. So it gives you an idea uh, of the scale of the devastation there. Uh, the official death toll at the moment is, uh, estimated death toll is uh, over, just over 1,000. Uh, but I think the uh, likelihood is that that is going to rise. What has been the reaction in Tokyo? Because it's remained relatively unscathed, but people are obviously watching as their relatives in other parts of the country are suffering. Yeah, Tokyo was, uh, was violently shaken by the earthquake, uh, but largely uh, undamaged. People have been going about their normal Saturday afternoon business, really, uh, and uh, behaving very calmly and in a very uh, orderly fashion on the surface. 
But when you go into the supermarkets and the convenience stores, uh, you can see that the shelves in many of them have been stripped pretty much bare. Uh, I wouldn't describe it as panic buying in Tokyo, but people are certainly stocking up, and I think that shows uh, how shaken they've been by this experience. Now, uh,